guys and welcome to the show and today I'm going to be doing some affordable alternatives, non-homage affordable alternatives to the hugely iconic and very popular Rolex Datejust. This is a bit of a response to a recent video by my good friend Federico. Also I'm going to be sharing a recent clothes haul. I've just got a whole batch of new stuff in for the summer. I haven't done a sartorial video for quite a while. Uh, mainly casual stuff because it is hot and um, uh, you know especially here in New York. To be honest guys you know my style is very very casual. Uh, I dress for comfort and uh, if, when I need to be smart, I can be smart, but really it is very casual summer stuff in today's video. But before all that, of course, I have to do a wristwatch check and it's no surprise. I'm wearing, I've, I've nicknamed it the Hoffman. I'm calling it the Hoffman because I remember as a child seeing uh, Dustin Hoffman wearing the Pepsi, the Rolex Pepsi. And I think it's, it was embedded in my mind, you know, Midnight Cowboy. Uh, marathon man, you know, the, 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 the heyday of, of dust, oh, he, before my time even, but I have to say uh, he was always a, a favourite actor of mine and, he, and I never forget seeing a picture of him wearing a GMT and I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. I know, very simplistic, but I named it the Hoffman, so uh, my little ode to Dustin Hoffman there uh, and as you can imagine I'm over the moon, I haven't taken it off Put it on the Bond NATO for the moment from, uh, this is actually a new one from Wrist Candy Watch Club. Okay, so wristwatch check done. Now before we get into some affordable alternatives for the day, just let's switch perspectives and have a closer look at some recent pickups for the summer. Now I'm doing this on the sofa because basically uh, it's just a little bit more room to maneuver. Now I'll start, I've got everything from my trainers, uh, I've even got a belt. Uh, and shirts and of course shorts, the all important shorts. Now we'll start over here with New Balance. Now I've brought my old New Balances in. Now by the way I'm wearing these particular slip-on uh, Lacoste shoes that I actually did include in last year's video. I tend to wear these kind of casually and then uh, when I'm out and about with uh, Ernest I'll wear these ones. Now I've used these for a year straight. These are the 996's and I pay a little bit extra to get the Made in USA ones. I've worn these pretty much a year straight. The amount of jogging I've done, I could have circumnavigated the globe. Yeah, you can see it's falling apart, so I kind of need uh, new ones. But if you actually look at the structure, considering all the, considering all the running I've done, they're, not, they're still perfectly intact. I mean, this just goes to show you, I had the Chinese ones previous and they just fell apart. I love New Balance because I love this, the, all the colours and co combinations and I also like you can get the USA made ones. So I've decided to go with, yeah, USA made again and this is a slightly different model. I haven't actually owned this model before. Uh, these, are, these are the 997s. Let me just get the details for you. Uh, these are also known as the Rockabillies and they retail for about 149 I know that's kind of expensive but honestly these things built to last and uh, so we'll just have a look and I've gone for this colour coordination gorgeous look at that I haven't laced them up they've got a really cool uh, pattern on the inside they've got a bit more absorption in the heels they have the um, end cap or whatever they call it Really cool kind of turquoise at the bottom, the logo on red, and made in the USA. So you can really be proud of those. I always go New Balance. I, I kind of like Adidas as well, or Adidas, or however you pronounce it. But my choice has got to be New Balance. I just love the quality, and yeah, white laces. So I've still got to, uh, I've still got to lace these up. But yeah, you just can't beat New Balance. Uh, and I love the colors you can have. So, those are the trainers I went for. Now, let's move on. Now, at the top of the list, I had to get a new belt. I have my Smart Luxury belt for, for formal wear, uh, but I decided to go for this. This is actually from, this is I had bought from Germany. This, you'll recognize the symbol. This is Fulschirmjäger, or Fulschirmjäger Army. These are German paratroopers, and this thing is really, really thick. It's um, 43 inches long, 110 centimeters cost 30 bucks but what I love about military stuff they are built to last and with this with this buckle 
uh, it's adjustable uh, which is really good for me especially because I put on weight while I was in hospital and now I'm losing it again so I need to be able to adjust it and this is so solid I mean this is what I love about army gear that it is just so robust it's not going to let you down you know I would have been happy with a US army one or anything like that but actually I just thought it was so so cool uh, you guys know I love my aviation history so really uh, really cool to have the full chip Jaeger I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, now it only comes in one size. Now this is because obviously you're not going to have uh, paratroopers that are overweight, so it's only one size, uh, but plenty enough for me. I have currently I have a, a 30 inch waist, but uh, before hospital I was 29, so I'll probably go back down to 29. Hopefully with all the exercise, a bargain at 30 bucks, and this kind of thing, you know, you buy military gear, it will last you a lifetime, very very sturdy. So talking to military, to kind of match that, I got some Levi cargo shorts. These are just standard uh, Levi's uh, with extra pockets on the side. Let's have a look. There we go. Really nice, really nice buttons. Uh, I like Levi's. Got the 30. I'll probably have to buy 29s next year when I get, when I get back into uh, my lean form myself. Uh, but absolute bargain. Only $19 on eBay brand new still the labels and everything really really cool and i just i just love that camouflage pattern i also got uh, cargo ones as well these are just a bit more plain um really useful the the pockets for putting your cameras and all the rest of it again just standard levi cargo shorts uh, nicely made with the, with the levi's uh, branding inside these were 15 so yeah really really affordable moving on uh, a three pack of these are crew neck lacoste shirts just the crew, standard crew neck it's a beautiful uh, pima cotton really nice and soft and they have the logo down there which i think is a little bit more smart uh, and the logo is in the logo is in a kind of a rubber it's a kind of rubber logo this time you guys know i love lacoste and absolute bargain 30 bucks for Pima shirts. What I love about Lacoste is this stuff lasts forever. This is this is what is good about buying. This is why I always return to Lacoste. I mean, I have a childhood affinity with the brand as well, but more importantly, you buy these shirts. I, you see, I'm wearing shirts from my teenage years, you know. I usually go size up. I can't stand tight t-shirts, especially in the summer when it's all hot and sticky. I want the air to flow a little bit under them. So I went for the, uh, what is this? I think these are large. Yeah, but the size is a little bit small anyway, so you always wanna go for a size up. Then I got two more V-necks, which you guys have been, you've seen my V-necks. This is the Pin Luline color. It's like a British racing green. Again, you've got the Pima, the beautiful Pima cotton. It's unbelievably soft. It's from Peru. Because of the climate and the soil, it, it's ideal for the highest quality of uh, cotton. So, and I just love these. These are really, really luxurious. They last you for years, extremely soft. Again, I bought them in a size up. Just, you know, I like a looser fit. I can't stand fitted t-shirts. That's just me, guys. If you want it fitted, go for a size smaller. These retail for 49.50, right? And this is the China Blue, absolutely gorgeous. So I got mine for 30 each. So saved quite a bit. Again, eBay, all uh, brand new, bagged, all the rest of it. So absolute bargain. Anyway, guys, I'll leave all the links down below. So that was my little uh, summer clothes haul. Not very much stuff. I don't really need that much stuff. Thing is, when you buy quality stuff like this, and you spend a little bit extra and you get these beautiful quality shirts and shoes like this, trainers like this, or sneakers as the Americans say, they last, they last much, much longer. And you don't have to keep rebuying stuff. These, these will look brand new for ages. You wash these a hundred times and they get a nice, nice fade to them. They're just gorgeous. Anyway, uh, let's take it back to the studio. Okay, welcome back guys. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Let's talk about the Rolex Datejust. Now, I mentioned this is a response to a recent video by my good friend Federico on Federico Talks Watches. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below, so please check it out. He has a fantastic channel. You guys obviously know him by now. He's a regular on my channel as well. 
Uh, so he did a fantastic video where basically he described the Datejust as the most versatile watch and a luxury piece that if you only had to buy one watch it pretty much would be the Datejust and I can certainly attest to that myself I've owned three Datejust my first one was the 1703 in two-tone then I upgraded to the 16234 stainless steel uh, with a blue dial and batons and then the last one I had which I did actually review on the channel was the 116200 I always had them in 36mm um, size as well I agree they're hugely versatile you know that little screw down crown the, the oyster case 100m water resistance it's actually the highest selling Rolex of all time, the, the highest selling model of all time. There's so many different versions, infinitely versatile in its look as well. You know, we're going with the two tone, different dials, different, you know, I had the Roman numerals on the last one I had, which was stunning with a blue sunburst dial, the fluted bezel, the, the smooth bezel. If you want to go sporty, you get the oyster bracelet. If you want to go more dressy, you got the Jubilee. Probably the number one watch I'd say that Rolex have with unrivaled. Uh, versatility. Federico is certainly right there. But ultimately, what is it that makes the date just just so versatile, more so than other pieces? And I think it's that fact that it can be worn with a suit and casually. It, you can wear it as a dress watch, but yet you can dive in a swimming pool and not worry about it. It's that robust, you know, the movement is hugely robust. Everything that Federico talked about, and I, I agree 100%. I wouldn't have had three in my watch collecting lifetime if I didn't agree. But there are some affordable alternatives and you guys know that when I do these videos you should know the rules by now. They've got to be non-homage, they've got to be original with their own character and they've got to be obviously cheaper than a Datejust. My first choice and yes it's rather predictable but it is of course the Seiko Saab 033. You guys know this has been one of my most successful watches, not only in its review, but as a personal kind of a keeper in my collection. I adore this watch. You've got that 100 meters water protection there, you've got that sapphire, you've got that robustness. I would even argue that this movement is even more robust than the Rolex. It's got an incredible power reserve of 50 hours. It's priced at a really competitive, just under the $400 mark. It's a Japanese domestic model, which means, you know, to be honest, guys, the Japanese tend to keep the better stuff for themselves. I don't ask me why, but they do. And this is a, one of those rare gems. There's so many in the Saab and Saab line, uh, but this has that kind of versatility that the date just is so famous for. You know, you could quite comfortably, hasn't got the screw down crown, but you could quite comfortably wear this on the beach and at the same time, Put a tuxedo on at night and go out with this. It's got that elegance, it's got that character. It looks great on any kind of strap, you know, especially the black one I feel is a little bit more versatile. Uh, there is, of course, the cream kind of off-white dialed version. The 6R1 movement that's in here is absolutely outstanding. It's one of those workhorse, reliable movements. It's not the most accurate, but that huge power reserve and the fact that you can, you know, not worry about this for 10, 15 years without service just is, is one of those rare qualities that make Seiko just, you know, punch way above their weight. And all for four, under $400, unbelievable. So that's my first choice. Also, guys, if you don't like the smaller size of this 38mm case, you can go for the Seiko Brights, the uh, SDGM, I hope I got that right. Uh, what is it? The 001 and the 003. You've got a cream and black dial version. I think that the, the case is a little bit more refined. I actually recently reviewed one. Guys, have a look back last week. 40 millimeter size. More similar to the new uh, Datejust 2. Okay, so what is my second choice? Well, I actually own it as well. And it's the Tudor Prince Date. This actually is the Prince Day Date. I paid just under one and a half grand for this. Uh, obviously, you've got the day day complication. I've also reviewed this watch, uh, so check out the full review. I'm not talking specifically about the day day. 
The print state is even more affordable. You know, check out the print state 75203, the two tone. You can get it on a Jubilee just like a date just. What is great is that you've got that choice of fluted and, and smooth bezels. You've still got that DNA of the of the Rolex date just, that oyster case, that luxurious high quality finish, but with the ETA in there, with the Tudor name, it's a little bit more kind of understated, keeps the price down. Uh, and you've got almost just as much choice with dials and, and all the rest of it as you do with the Datejust. Also check out the 74000N, the, another one I owned. Uh, that one comes with the Explorer style dial. Absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, a little bit of kind of a hybrid of a Datejust and, ex and an Explorer, which is not a bad thing, trust me guys. That tends to be in the smaller size in 34 millimeters, but it, keeps the cost down. If you want to go 36 and uh, even beyond to 38 millimeters, check out the Tudor Prince Jumbo. And of course, there's this version of Day Date. Search for the Tudor uh, 76214. Obviously, you're not going to have the, the 904L stainless steel that the Rolex uses. And in some cases, like on my little Day Date, if you notice there, there is actually the, the Rolex crown and the logos on the back. Uh, even on some of the uh, clasps, you'll see the, the, the Rolex logo. So it's, it's honestly, you're getting that Rolex DNA for a lot less. And the great thing is it's not a homage because at the end of the day, it is made by Rolex. You know, some of the early versions like this, they use 14 karat gold, for example, instead of 18 karat gold. But it's all just to keep the cost down, but you're still getting that, that precision, that quality. Uh, if you're interested, have a look for my version. This is the reference number 94614. It's in a bit of an odd size at 35 millimeters. Perfect for me. What is great, it has the holes case and 20 millimeter lug width, which just makes it a joy to put straps on. So those are my two top choices for alternatives for the Rolex Datejust. Just in fact, actually now I've got them up, I should do my, I should try and get a thumbnail. You know, those stupid faces. It always helps the ratings. If I do like a, let me see if I can do a really good, let's, let's try and do another one. There we go, that's better. There we go. So that's for the thumbnail. <laughs> Sorry guys. Those are my two choices. I'd really like to hear yours. Please let me know your queries, questions, thoughts, opinions, all the rest of it down below in the comments. Don't forget to nominate your choices. I especially love hearing your opinions because let's help the people watching this video. And if you are watching this video and looking for more alternatives, check the comments. My audience are extremely knowledgeable uh, and experienced, so there's going to be a wealth of suggestions to look for down there. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.